Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, listen to this. God says, let's make man in our image and after our likeness. Imagine that you made in the image of God. When I got revelation of this, it blew my mind because think about it, the word image alone, it means an exact duplicate. It means a precise copy. It means a true mirror reflection of another. This means that you and I have been gifted with a quality that most people have never tapped. We literally have the divine nature of God within us, especially once you're born again, born anew, now you're operating with a divine quality. We're excited to introduce three new ways you can give to our church. The first is text giving. You can give now, at home, or whenever you want, simply by texting the word GIVE to our church's giving number. Once you receive your text reply, follow the prompts in your one-time registration to complete your gift. The second way is online giving. You can do this by going to our church's giving page and following the prompts to give. Log in by using your mobile phone number and secure PIN, or your email and password. Once you've accessed your giving account, you can give a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift scheduled to go out on the date you choose. If you'd like to give to a specific area of our ministry, make sure to designate your gift using the Fund drop-down menu. The third way is giving through our app. Simply open our app and access the Give tab to complete your gift. If you don't have our app downloaded yet, just head over to the App Store and type in Church by Ministry One. Download the app and then search our church's name. If you have any questions about any of these ways to give to our church, feel free to ask one of our staff members for assistance. Thank you for your continued generosity to our church. Hello, this is Dr. Norman Thomas. Welcome to Power Talk today. We have a great word lined up for you. We're talking about kingdom first. That's so important in such a polarized world in which we're living in today. You and I have to stay on track with our thinking and our mindset and make sure we're seeking the kingdom first, first and foremost. You're going to enjoy this teaching. It's a very strong word. Prepare your heart to receive it, and I'll be back at the end. See you then. Hostility. Let's begin by quoting Jesus. He said in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Now I have it on my notes in the Amplified Bible Translation. And as by the way, these notes are available to you on our website. And that information will go up on the screen. If you'll just simply go to NLC, that's for New Life Church, nlcinternational.org and click on media and if you go all the way down to the bottom of that screen in the media page you'll find study notes and those notes are there right now available for you to download to your device or even to print if you're in a position to print them out meditate what I'm teaching you go over these scriptures because I'm going to stick close to the Bible over the next three to four weeks as we talk about the kingdom of God first. Now, first, in contrast to a whole lot of ideology that is out there, you know, where nationalism and uh, first country first and all this is concerned, we're going, to, we're going to the Bible, and we're going to show you how to be patriotic while being kingdom. <laughs> That's what we need. We need to be kingdom, and we need to be kingdom first. Now, in the Amplified Translation of the Bible, it reads this way, but seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness. Now, when we talk about the kingdom of God, sometimes that is a mystery to some people because they're not necessarily taught on the kingdom of God. They hear teaching about being a Christian. They hear teaching about going to heaven or not going to hell, or whatever. But very, it's, it's not prevalent that people are being taught the dynamics of the kingdom of God. 
We see it in the scriptures and we sort of read over it and we just kind of conclude that it means heaven or it just means it's synonymous with the term Christianity. But it's not. And we're going to dig into this so that we can understand better how we're supposed to operate and navigate and function and respond in today's world as believers in Christ Jesus. So in the Amplified Classic Translation, which, by the way, is out of print. I don't know why. But anyway, in the Amplified Bible Classic Translation, it reads this way. Seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, the kingdom. What is the kingdom? His way of doing and his way of being right. Now, in my notes, I have emboldened those phrases, that phrase, those words, those words, because I want those words to remain uh, seated in your consciousness as we walk through today's teaching. God's way of doing and God's way of being right. Opposed to what? Your way of doing or my way of doing and our way of being right. You see, let's just, let's just take for example right now. Let's take one issue, any issue. I don't even have to name it. You just, just, we just say we're going to take one issue. And I may have a way of being right about that issue. And you may have a way of being right about that issue. And guess what? <clears throat> they don't match. <clears throat> they don't coincide. You think one way about it, and I think another way about it. But as believers, we have to put our way of being right aside and agree on God's way of being right. And I know sometimes when we even go that way, there's different interpretations of what God is saying here and there. Well, I hope during these teachings that that is so clear that no interpretation is needed. We're just going to stay very simply. Uh, we're going to keep it very simple and stick right with the words of Jesus. And so very little translation will be needed at all, if any. And we, it, we, we, will, we will know uh, concluding at the conclusion of this teaching and at the conclusion of this series, how important it is for you and I to stay on focus and stay on target based on Jesus' teachings, which is the gospel of the kingdom. And you can find that all through the gospels as Jesus taught. So it's kingdom first. It's God's way of doing First, it's God's way of being right first. And then he says, and then all these things will be added to you, you see. Now, let's look at the idea of identity. What is happening in America and probably abroad in other nations as well, it, I, 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 absolutely it is, is that the church is being defined and the church has been defined for, for centuries. And more and more and more, the church is being defined by the world. The world is making the determination of who and what the church is. And unfortunately, the church, the body of Christ, is buying into it, is receiving their uh, definition of who we are. That is not supposed to be. Now, we have our own defining of who we are, and it's found in the scriptures. And this is where we need to go to discover who we are, how we think, what we believe, how we navigate, how we respond to people, how we respond to one another, how we move forward in life, and how we advance the kingdom while doing so. And that is found right here in the scriptures. So now let's look at one such scripture in the book of St. John chapter uh, 18, verse 35 in the Amplified Translation. Now, uh, this, let's just read it. Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Your own people and nation and their chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom my kingship, my royal power belongs not in this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my followers would have been fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. 
But as it is, my kingdom is not from here, this world. It has no such origin and no such source. So this passage of scripture basically is letting us know a very simple but yet powerful truth that God's kingdom is not of this domain. God's kingdom is not of this world. You and I as believers then are not of this domain. We are not of this world. I want that to sink in because it helps to create a baseline and a foundation for more of what we're going to say today. Now, let's just look at another scripture. And I'm going to give you a lot of scripture. So uh, write them down or take the notes and go back and look at it later. In John chapter 3 and verse 3 in the Amplified Bible, Jesus answered him, I assure you most solemnly I tell you that unless a person is born again, meaning born anew or born from above, he cannot ever see, know, or be acquainted with and experience the kingdom of God. I'm going to read it again. It says, Jesus says, I assure you most solemnly I tell you that unless a person is born again, born anew or born from above, he cannot ever see, which means he cannot ever know, he cannot ever be acquainted with, and he cannot ever experience the kingdom of God. Now, one of the errors that is commonly found uh, when receiving the scripture among Christians is they equate the kingdom of God with heaven. And that is not what he is saying. That is not. The kingdom of God is not the city heaven. Even the kingdom of heaven is not the city heaven. The kingdom of God, remember, is God's way of doing and God's way of being right. Now, let's suppose we question God's way of doing and being right where? On earth. Because there's no contention regarding the fact that God's way is the way of heaven and God's way of being right is the way of heaven. It's not necessary that that be enforced in heaven. It's necessary that that be enforced on the earth. Thy will be done where? On earth as it is done where? In heaven. So the kingdom of God is for the earth. It is for the earth. It is God's way of being right on earth is God's way of doing on earth. And so here, Jesus is saying, but unless you're born again, you'll never see God's way of doing right on earth and God's way of being right on earth. You'll never become acquainted with, nor will you ever experience the kingdom of God. So how do we acquire this identity of the kingdom? We acquire this identity of the kingdom by first and foremost being born again. So that means when you say I'm a Christian, that means that when you say I'm saved, that means that when you say I'm born again, it means that you have come under another kingdom other than this earthly domain and that kingdom has a king, and that king is Jesus. And that king has dispatched us here in the earth to represent its culture, heaven's culture. The kingdom of God is to express heaven's culture on the earth. And that means I don't have the right, I don't get to express my own personal view or opinion if it's separate from that of God's and if it's separate from that of the kingdom of God. That means I have to align my thinking, align my speech, align my behavior, align my attitudes that fits with the kingdom. Because as Paul indicated, 
in 2 Corinthians, I believe it was in verse, chapter 5, he says we are ambassadors. That means we are diplomatic representatives of the kingdom of God here on earth. And we're under orders, just like Jesus was. Jesus demonstrated this for us. He showed us how to do it. He spoke what the Father told him to speak, and he did, and he acted in ways in which the Father uh, had him to act and do. And he did not separate from that. He did not deviate from that because of some personal preference or some personal viewpoint or some personal idea. He stuck with his assignment and followed the orders of the Father. And so as Jesus did, so should we be doing as well. Okay, now, so the next thing I say here is that in the world, but not of the world. In the world, but not of the world. I want you to say, I am in the world, but I am not of the world. Okay, now let's validate that with scripture. John chapter 17, verse 15, in the Amplified Translation, it says, I do not ask. Now, Jesus here is praying, and he's praying to his Father, okay? He's praying to God. Here's what he's saying. I do not ask that you take them, meaning us, meaning the Christians, the disciples. Don't take them out of the world, but that you will keep and protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, meaning they're not worldly, meaning they're not belonging to the world, just as I am not of the world. Now, this is very important because you have to understand what he's saying here. He's saying they are not of the world, meaning you and I, the disciples, we are not of the world. We don't belong to this world. We are not worldly. He says, just as I am not of the world. Now, I'm emphasizing this because it's important for you to understand that Jesus is giving specific identity to you. He is characterizing your nature. He's characterizing who you are and your character. He says to you, here's what he says to you, you are not of this world. You are, you are from above. Remember what he told uh, uh, the um, pilot? He says, you're from above. You're not of this world. Now, you're in this world, yeah, but you're not of this world. Meaning what? You must learn how to function in this world while remembering that this world does not dictate your character and this world does not dictate who you are and what you do. Don't, don't get entangled with this world. Don't get bogged down in this world's way of doing and being. So, but then Jesus also emphasized that there are those that are of this world. And that's found in John chapter 8, verse 33 in the Amplified Translation. He said to them, you are from below, I am from above. Now here he's talking to the Pharisees. And that's astounding because the Pharisees were the religious hierarchy of the day. They, they are the, uh, the religious lawyers, the scribes and the Pharisees and the Herodians. And, and these are the ones that quote unquote represented God before Jesus' arrival in, in, in their effort to uh, promote and advance the Mosaic law. But here Jesus is telling them, the Pharisees, you are from below. I am from above. You are of this world, of this earthly order, and I am not of this world. Now, there is the distinction. Jesus says there are those that are of this world. There are those that are of this earthly order. 
But then there are those that are not of this world and that are not of this earthly order. And that's where you and I, as believers in Christ, we fall into the category, not of this world. That's important. And I know I'm emphasizing it, but it's important. It's highly important because if you don't see that, then you will easily entangle yourself with this world's way of doing things and this world's way of being. Unfortunately, this is what has happened to a degree even among Christians in today's world. We have, we have entangled ourselves with politics and that is from below without emphasizing the importance of our character and our nature as kingdom citizens. Whenever a person is more conscious of their loyalty to a nation, without consciousness or greater consciousness of their loyalty to God and his kingdom, there's going to be problems. There's going to be problems, and there is problems in that particular nation. My encouragement to you is to just take a step back and to be reminded of the higher identity that you carry. Now, I'm not saying detach from this world. No, I'm not saying that we don't have a role to play in this world. We do, and we're going to get to that. But before we get to that, you must be reminded as a Christian, your first and foremost loyalty belongs to God and his word. It's, it's, it's God and his word, God and his kingdom. And that's where our loyalties rest as Christians, as believers. And if we don't do that, then we're going to create fault lines within our, uh, our church, our body of Christ. There are going to be fault lines. And because we've attached to the world's way of doing things, the, those fault lines are many. There are fault lines that lie within ethnicity. There are fault lines that lie uh, within political preferences. There are fault lines that lie within the differences in socio socioeconomic statuses. You see, there's just too many fault lines that the world has to offer for the church to come down to the level of the world and try to function. You're going to fall short of your love walk to humanity when that happens. So we don't belong there. We belong higher. It's called the kingdom of God. God's way of doing and God's way of being right. Now, I'm going to say one more thing, then I'm going to leave it till next time. We're going to pick it up there. I'm going to talk one more, uh, on one more emphasis here. The emphasis is dual citizenship. Dual citizenship. Now, the reason you and I as Christians have dual citizenship is because we have earthly citizenship and then we have kingdom citizenship. But I'm trying to get you to understand that your kingdom citizenship is first and foremost. I just want you to know that your life has potential to be so blessed when you put God's agenda first. Not your political philosophy, not your religious ideology, but God's agenda first. And God's agenda first is kingdom first. God is a kingdom God. Jesus taught it throughout his lifetime here on the earth. That's what, that's exactly what he came to preach. He didn't come to preach religion. He came to preach the kingdom of God. And I know that as you and I pursue the kingdom of God, our lives will be tremendously blessed. Well, we're going to pick up right here next time. But until then, this is Dr. Norman Thomas saying, keep walking by faith says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Listen to this. God says, let's make man in our image and after our likeness. Imagine that you made in the image of God. When I got revelation of this, it blew my mind because think about it, the word image alone, it means an exact duplicate. It means a precise copy. It means a true mirror reflection of another. 
This means that you and I have been gifted with a quality that most people have never tapped. We literally have the divine nature of God within us, especially once you're born again, born anew, now you're operating with a divine quality. We're excited to introduce three new ways you can give to our church. The first is text giving. You can give now, at home, or whenever you want, simply by texting the word GIVE to our church's giving number. Once you receive your text reply, follow the prompts in your one-time registration to complete your gift. The second way is online giving. You can do this by going to our church's giving page and following the prompts to give. Log in by using your mobile phone number and secure PIN or your email and password. Once you've accessed your giving account, you can give a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift scheduled to go out on the date you choose. If you'd like to give to a specific area of our ministry, make sure to designate your gift using the Fund drop-down menu. The third way is giving through our app. Simply open our app and access the Give tab to complete your gift. If you don't have our app downloaded yet, just head over to the App Store and type in Church by Ministry One. Download the app and then search our church's name. If you have any questions about any of these ways to give to our church, feel free to ask one of our staff members for assistance. Thank you for your continued generosity to our church.